Have you ever held a knife in your hand that looked way better in person than it did in the pictures online? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you answered yes to that question, I'm going to need you to show that like button some love. This is the Best Tech Ornetta. This was recently sent to me for review by the Best Tech Pass Around Group via Eric Outer. Shout out to Eric, who has been keeping me supplied with all of this juicy Best Tech goodness. I do not get to keep it. This is a loner. So when I'm done, it will be getting sent back. Now, he didn't just send me this guy, the Primo, the Titanium and M390. No, he also sent me a surprising one to compare it against. It's the same knife, but different materials different lock can it compare does it compare it might surprise you because i'll tell you what it surprised me and i've only had these in my possession now for a few days i've had a chance to mess with them a little bit just enough to get some opinions down so that i can give you my overview guys let's dive in deep and check out the best tech ornetta this is the best tech ornetta Designed by Kombu, manufactured by Best Tech. M390 blade, titanium, milled, beveled, and contoured handle scales, brass, uh, brass anodized uh, pivot collar, beautiful design language, fuller deployment hole, milled titanium pocket clip. There's no doubt that this is one beautiful knife made of premium materials this knife also came out around two years ago here's the issue it's 255 dollars the reason why that's an issue is that not everyone can afford that enter this model also the best tech ornetta this one with n690 blade steel G10 handle scales, liner lock, but you still get a milled titanium pocket clip and this backspacer. This one is not $255. This one will run you somewhere in the realm of around $125. And this one just came out this year. At a glance, these look very, very similar. But there's some differences. Aside from the materials, there are differences. Believe it or not, and you might not be able to tell from the get. So I've been handling these for the last couple of days, on and off, fidgeting with them, opening them, closing them, trying the deployment mechanisms, because when you change the materials and you change the lock type, you end up changing quite a lot about the knife. Let's start with the design language. If you dig in deep on these handle scales, you can see the milling lines, which look beautiful. The cutouts here are subtle, but not too subtle. The brass pivot collar looks great. It's a one-sided pivot. Uh, I, I absolutely love that. Not having to, you know, unscrew two screws to get to one pivot is great. And I don't really care what anyone thinks on the contrary. I just prefer it that way. It's a captive pivot, that's nice, and M390 is great. The world doesn't need me to extol the virtues of M390. But if you didn't know, M390 has great edge retention. I'm a huge fan of how these handle scales are scalloped out. I'm used to seeing lock bars scalloped out, but on the other side. To have it right there actually really lends to some beautiful hand melting goodness as far as the ergonomics are concerned like this feels great in the hand when titanium is contoured and rounded it feels amazing it doesn't have any hot spots the design is beautiful and kombu did an amazing job on this one i'm a huge fan of fullers as deployment mechanisms i think that it might be my favorite way to deploy a knife and this one is no disappointment the detent isn't super strong but it's also not super light and the action 
uh, is nice and snappy. So what's the difference? Well, you get the same design cues on this one. But I'm going to address the zebra in the room. Who approved this? Who approved this? Who approved this color scheme? I know they have more sensible color schemes out there, but this zebra stripe honestly has me feeling like I'm in a white snake music video. I'm not even sure why, but the the coloring just throws me off. And I'm just going to be honest about that. The coloring throws me off. You you get a different style of design on the pivot. This is the midline. So you get the B. And then here on the back, you get the titanium uh, pocket clip. Same style. But instead of being black like the rest of the hardware, which would make some sense and would be a little bit of redemption, it's this copper gold color? What? Look... Maybe I'm stuck in a rut, but if the backspacer is black, the pivot's black, the screws are black, and the blade is black, you'd think that the clip would also be black, but it's not. Instead, it's this, you know, copperish, bronze, goldish color, which is, it's throwing me off because it's out of place with the rest of the knife. This, I'm not a huge fan of the zebra, but at least it makes sense you know, with the design scheme, but you flip it over and it makes me wonder why, why was it important that we make that a gold? Like, are, were we going for, you know, a eighties regret eighties rock and roll regret? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to move past the clip for now because I like the shape. I just don't like the color. Uh, that should be black. You're not going to change my mind. Uh, this one is the mid-tier. With the mid-tier, you get N, N, not M, N690, which has decent edge retention. It's not the most amazing steel, but it's also not a super budget steel. I would take N690 over D2 any day of the week, and so it's definitely an upgrade in that respect. Uh, the liner lock, liner locks are not normally my favorite, but there are some virtues if you are someone that likes to fidget. For example, this action is smoother and snappier than the premium model. I'll say that again. The action, both in deployment and in shutting the blade, is better. What? What? How? I mean, at what point, you know what, like when when you when I see a mid-tier version of a knife, I don't expect anything to be better than the premium tier. I don't I don't. I'm paying for better. Why don't I get better? And I, don't get me wrong. This knife is a much nicer knife. And it is much, much more worthy of a higher price tag than this knife. We're talking about $120 difference between the two. So what do you get for that extra $120 if you decide you know, to step it up to the big boy? Okay, maybe it's not a big boy. They're the same size, but you know what I meant. What do you get when you decide to step up to M390 and titanium with all of these beautiful design characteristics that do make sense? You get better materials. It's plain and simple, but also the design makes more sense. You know, when checking out this G10 handle scale, I'm going to be honest with you, it, it doesn't make as much sense to have all of the design cues. And they can't. They just can't achieve what they were able to achieve with this titanium. The scale is more like a slab, which, you know, G10 is harder to contour. I get that. Um, but... These lines are not as defined on G10. They're not going to be as sharp. They're not going to be as crisp. You're not going to see the milling lines. You're just going to see G10. And I would have almost preferred if they had made at least this one less busy. As far as the design scheme is concerned, I would almost be happier with this if they hadn't done the extra milling to try to copy that design from the premium model. This is what people want. But it just might be that this is what people can afford. 
They don't weigh very much different. I believe that this is about 0.2 ounces heavier. Uh, that's not a big difference considering that one of these has G10 and the other one has titanium. Uh, they both have these back spacers and they're both titanium, uh, but the worn look on here is beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous. Kombu does a phenomenal job of making knives that just look good. The clip side of the handle scales is just as pretty as the show side. Now, keep in mind, guys, this one has this one's a pass around model. I believe that once upon a time, Metal Complex was reviewing this very same knife, not the same model, this very same knife. Um, so it's been around. That's my hunch. This has seen a lot of cameras. It's seen a lot of lights. It's gotten the attention. And it deserves it. It's beautiful. So why the need? Why the need for this Ornetta? The mid tier. Because they do make a budget tier that ha has you know cheaper materials all around. But the mid tier is going to be a really, really good value for a lot of people. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you get some premium materials. Like they have other color variants that aren't this zebra, you know, 80s underwear print. Uh, they don't have this garish, non-matching pocket clip. What you get on this mid-tier is insane value on the action. To get an action, for a, a better action for less money is tough. And for a, a, a liner lock to have so utterly convinced me that the action and the fidget factor is better on the, the less expensive model just blows my mind. I, I can't I can't fathom you get all the all the same things that really make the other knife so good minus the titanium you get the fuller you get the deployment hole you get the backspacer and you know how I love backspacers and you get better action true N690 is not the most amazing steel but you'll get over it trust me if you never knew what steel a knife was made out of it wouldn't matter to you as much. We place a lot of value in those blade steels because we have been trained to look into it. But for the everyday user whose most actions they're going to perform with this is going to be opening some Amazon boxes, you know, maybe fidgeting with it at the office. I just can't. It's the zebra print, okay? It's the zebra print. The action is fantastic. And for the $120, $125 price point, I don't think you can go wrong. Would I buy this one? Yes, but not this specific one. I would go for the non-zebra print. That's just my personal opinion. You know, putting away my feelings about the color scheme aside, I really like this model. I think that so far, it's very impressive. I'm actually having more fun messing with this than I am with the premium model. And again, the premium model is good gorgeous those lines are absolutely fantastic and whether the worn and weathered look is a result of this being in so many pockets and being under so many lights or if it was intended that way from the factory you have to appreciate just how good looking the premium ornetta really is and that's just my honest opinion guys i have all the respect in the world for this knife right here. All I'm trying to say is that if you're in the $120 to $130 price range and you want something that feels good, that has snappy action, a good design, check out the mid-tier Ornetta. And I will put a link. It won't be an affiliate link because... You know, Knife Center doesn't have me as an affiliate, but I'll put a link to where you can find these Ornettas on Knife Center so that you can check them out for yourself and see if there's a, a variant or a combination that you like. And they have everything from the budget version to this mid tier all the way to the high end guy right here, which I 
This knife makes me want to do some photo shoots. I'll be honest with you. This knife is photogenic as hell. All right, I'm gushing about another Kombu design. Uh, Kombu is quickly becoming one of my favorite designers because of his ability to make knives that just look beautiful. So, aside from that, this wasn't really a review. This was me giving my first first impressions as an overview after only having them in hand for a few days. Um, I will get my rank and review video out there on these knives, and I think I'll probably rank them at the same time. So, if you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Guys, that's all I got for you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And of course, like I said, if you want to see the rank and review, tap subscribe. My friends, I'll see you on the flip side.